This training is on AT Needs Assessment based on the SET framework. My name is Laura Parks and I'm an AT Specialist with TASC, Technology Assistance for Special Consumers. We're a program of UCP in Huntsville, Alabama. TASC collaborates with STAR, Alabama's Assistive Technology Resource, to provide free assistive technology training throughout the state of Alabama. So let's talk a little bit about the SET framework. First, Let's talk about who created it. Joy Isabella created the SET framework. She was having several colleagues ask her, how do you determine what assistive technology a student may need to use? And she came up with this fantastic framework. Her website, joyzabella.com, is full of additional resources and helpful forms. So why is the SET a framework? It's a framework because it's a structure. It provides support and stability to the whole assistive technology assessment process. In order for the framework to work, it has to be built on a good foundation. When I think about what is a good foundation for assistive technology, it's good teaching practices. It's a universal design. It's a teacher who wants to see her students succeed. It's also a framework because it's a teamwork. Have you ever seen a barn raised by just one person? No. It's so much easier to build a barn, build a house, when there's a team working together to get it framed. So it's really crucial and important that a team works with the SET framework. Also, the framework looks different for each student. It's not a uniform, one-size-fits-all process. When you think about a framing of a house, the frame isn't the end product, nor is the SET framework intended to be a start-to-finish project that you're done with. It's meant to be an ongoing thing, and the product is actually that implementation of the assistive technology. A huge part of this that framework is the reframing. Once you've gone through the framework process, you have to reanalyze and think about, hmm, what did we do? What, how can we do things differently? Why is it or is it not working? So reframing is an important part of the set framework. So let's begin talking about each component of the set framework. The S in SET stands for student. So when you're looking at the student, you may want to think about their, what are their physical characteristics? What is their age? What is their health? What are their motor abilities? Do they have optimal seating and positioning? Maybe they're in a walker. Maybe they use a wheelchair. Maybe sometimes they're in a bean bag or a desk. It's important to talk about all their physical needs and positioning. The physical could also include the student's diagnosis and if they're receiving occupational or physical therapy services. Another thing to consider about the student is their sensory needs. Are there any vision or hearing concerns? Do they wear glasses? Do they have hearing aids? Are they sensitive to touch? Do they have sensory needs that maybe have to be met through physical activities such as jumping on a trampoline or a bean bag? It's important, too, to talk about if the occupational therapist or other therapist provides sensory support for the student. When you're thinking about the students, you can't forget the academic performance. Simple things such as what is their grade level? Do they participate in regular education? How much special education support are they receiving? What are some of the accommodations that they currently are receiving that helps them access their curriculum? Any data from standardized assessments is very helpful within examining the academic performance. If you know their current level of grade, current reading grade level or math performance, that can help with understanding the academic performance of the student. When you're looking at the students, you also have to examine the cognitive abilities. A student with an intellectual disability may be on a different academic tract, and therefore that needs to be examined when you're looking at the framework. Communication is a big consideration when you're thinking about the student and the student set framework. Does the student have good verbal communication skills? Can they carry on a conversation? Are they fluent with their speech? Are they using an AAC device? It's important to describe what AAC device are they using and what does it look like as far as how many options or how many choices. 
the intelligibility of the communication, if it's verbal, should be considered. If the student is receiving speech-language therapy services, you would want to document it here in the communication section. Another thing to consider is the social competence of a student. What are the adaptive behaviors that they use? Do they have the ability to interact with others? Do they have friends? Do they have a hard time understanding parallel play or cooperative play? Behavior is something to be considered about the student because you want to know if the behavior interferes with their learning. Now sometimes behavior, of course, is because of their lack of ability to communicate or their lack of ability to be academically successful. But within this framework, we're going to consider it kind of a separate thing. Do they use supports for their behavior, such as schedules or transitioning? Is there a behavior plan in place? Social stories, video modeling, all that's important to understand the behavior of the student. Recreation and leisure are important for the student, maybe not so much important for the teacher, but it's what do the kids, student like to do for fun? Do they enjoy video games? Do they enjoy playing outside? Do they enjoy sports and recreations? Are they members of certain academic clubs? You know, maybe they're on the basketball team at the school. And finally, something to consider is the vocational performance. What is the student's job preferences or possible interest for future employment? Do they have good work skills? These various components, all looking at the student and really helping understand a full, well-rounded picture of what the student looks like. Sometimes when you're evaluating a student, you may not use all of the categories. For example, if I was evaluating a student who is in first grade with a set framework, I may not include vocational performance, because first grade is a little bit young to be thinking about your first job. Now, if the student was in 11th grade, that's a completely different student. Remember, this is a framework. It's flexible. You don't have to use every single characteristic. Now that we've looked at the student, let's look at the E of SET, which stands for the environment. So when we think about the environment, we might have already addressed it when we've talked about the student, but that's okay. It just helps reinforce what we've examined about the student. Is the student in a regular education classroom? Are they in a special education classroom? Do they have to change at classes? That's a big deal for somebody with mobility impairments, if they have to change classes. Or even a student with organization, and they have to go from one class to the next and get their books out of the locker. What is their home environment like? If they have to complete homework, it's necessary to consider what, is, what tools do they have access to at home in order to complete and access their curriculum at home. Employment is an important environment to consider for older students, whether they're working inside or outside, even with communication devices or using an iPad. Sometimes it's hard to use them when you're outside, but so that's something to consider. What is the student going to use if their employment requires them to be outside? The big question about environment, is there something in the environment that prevents the students from being successful that can or cannot be changed? Sure, we would all love the perfect building with nice wide doors, no stairs, universally designed, but unfortunately some of our schools are older and the environment's not as conducive for students with physical disabilities. And that's not something we can necessarily change then maybe we can make little changes to the environment to help the student access the curriculum better. So now we're ready to move on to the task. So what task should that student do that he or she is unable to do at a level that reflects his or her skills and abilities? Could they do more independently with task? Could they do something more easily or more efficient? No one likes to do something the hard way. So if we can use technology to support a student so they can do it and it's easier for them, they're more likely to do it and get a better quality out of them. Some of the tasks you may want to think about are things such as the motor aspects of writing, reading on grade level, composing written materials, math, organization, behavior. A few more things to consider with the task are communication. 
What about aids to daily living? Computer access? Can they access the computer? Mobility. So are they expected to move between classes? Or is it okay that they can't independently transition between classes? Remember, that's kind of going back to the environment and the student needs. Positioning and seating, vision and hearing are all things to consider with the task. Now, these have all been modified from the Wisconsin Assistive Technology, Technology Initiative, or the WADI, and there's a link to that on our website as well. And here's the biggie. Only until you've looked at the student, the environment, and the task can you look at the tools. So what tools may assist the student in being able to complete the task? So when we're thinking about the tools, we need to consider what are the crucial features of that tool? Always describe the function. Never describe or just name the tool. For example, I once read an IEP where the student was documented to use a red switch to access the computer. When I visited the classroom, the student was using a green switch. Yes, he was able to use it, and yes, he was able to access the, the curriculum via the computer, but the problem was it wasn't the original red switch that was specified in the IEP. The IEP should have read the student will use a capability switch to access the computer, activating it with his hand. Part of the tools is also discussing when and how the student will use the tool. Let's say a student has some writing concerns and they have difficulty completing handwritten assignments. So that was the task. Maybe the environment is a general education classroom. Well, one of the tools may be a personal word processor. Well, is that student going to use the personal word processor for all of their tasks? Or are they only going to use it for tasks requiring two or greater sentences? The student probably doesn't need to use that personal word processor for every single test where it's multiple choice or just fill in the blank. So we're going to describe when and how that student will use the tool. It's really easy to get a tool and then not know how to use it. Training is essential. And, we'll, and you should talk about that within the set framework is what training is needed for the tool. The student needs training most importantly, but also any individuals that need to support him with using that tool. So if a paraprofessional is in charge of downloading the, the printed materials once the student has completed, the paraprofessional needs to know how to do it. The same thing with the parents. They may, do, they may need to be trained on how to use the tool. We just kind of briefly mentioned about the training and the support staff. The support staff needs to know what it, is their role with the tools. For some students that are very independent, they don't need that support staff helping them with their tool, but that needs to be defined that the student can independently use the tool. When you think about the tools, you need to consider what is already available in the environment. If there's computers, then it may not be necessary for the student to have a word processor. Maybe the school is high tech and they're using iPads. Well, a word processor can type written assignments, but if the student can type written assignments on an iPad, there's really not a need for the personal word processor tool. What tools has the student already tried? So if the student has already used a personal word processor, but it didn't meet their needs, why not? Did it, was they not trained on it properly? Did they not have enough time for implementation? Was there not a clear description of how that tool was to be implemented or the function of it? So if the student has tried things, document it. So that helps determine maybe better what tools might be more appropriate and more effective for accessing the curriculum. Now, it's really easy in the schools when you have limited funding to think about the tools, to go to a closet and say, I have these tools, how can this help the students? It's okay once you already know the student, the environment, the task, and you have an understanding of what type of tool you need to go to the closet and look to see what the school has. We're not required by law to provide the best, modern, most up-to-date tool, but the tool does need to be the function. So if a student needed a personal word processor with a spell checker, and you go to the AT closet, and all you have is a personal word processor but no spell checking on it, that tool does not meet the student's needs, therefore it's not appropriate. I love free tools. They are my absolute favorites. 
Free tools are perfectly acceptable when helping a student access the curriculum. Free tools can also be really good starting points to determine, hey, is this the exact type of tool the student needs? Maybe the tool, the free tool doesn't have a certain feature, but the student doesn't need that feature. Or if you implement the free tool and notice that the student is struggling, it's time to reset again and look again about, hmm, maybe this tool isn't meeting this task that the student's trying to do and it's not the function. And it's time to consider maybe a more expensive program or a tool. And tools, it's hard sometimes because you may not have access to the tool that you need. Don't worry. There are lending libraries throughout the state. TASC provides some lending library equipment and at no charge for families and professionals to borrow to try before they buy. Many vendors will also provide tools at no cost to a school because they want to make sure that tool is the right fit. There's nothing worse than using a tool and it just not being the right tool. And then that frustrates the staff and the professionals. And worst of all, it frustrates the individual. Using the wrong tool can really make that individual feel like they can't do it, even when they're given the tool. And they kind of give up. And I've seen this happen, and I've been guilty of matching a tool with a student that wasn't quite the right fit. And really, it kind of breaks your heart to see a student struggle like that. So it's really important to be open with the student and say, listen, we're going to try this tool. We borrowed it. you know, And it's OK if it doesn't work, because guess what? There's something else we can try. And finally, the biggest question we get from school systems is, how are we going to fund this tool? Remember, lots of tools are free, so that does take off some of the burden. But sometimes there are specific tools that do have to be purchased. These tools may be able to be funded through medical insurance, especially if it's a communication device or a mobility device. If a student is old enough and the tool helps them with becoming employed, vocational rehabilitation may be able to help. Many organizations offer grants to families um, to, in order to get a tool for a student that needs them at home so they can use it at home. But really, it is the school's responsibility for a student to be able to access the curriculum. Once you've completed the set framework and you've examined the student, the environment, and the task, if a tool is required in order for that student to access the curriculum, it is the school's responsibility to make it accessible for the student. And this now completes the set framework training.